Hey, what's going on guys? It's Turin here with another Warhammer Total War online commentary. In this particular battle, I'll be playing the Dwarves led by Grom Brindle, the White Dwarf, and I'm going to be facing off against the Warriors of Chaos, so definitely going to be some heavy metal clash in here. Hopefully you guys will uh, enjoy this one. So as far as my army composition goes, as you guys know when I played the Dwarves, I don't like to bring a lot of missile units. I feel like it's a pretty big liability. Granted, there may be some exception, uh, exceptions against factions like the Wood Elves, but still, I did bring a single group of Thunders to give me some flexibility in regards to targeting you know, Chaos Lords on Dragons, uh, you know, a little bit of pressure on Manticores, and Again, Thunders are pretty good at dealing with Chaos Cav, which you can see he does indeed have two Chaos Knights with Lances. So aside from that, I do have Longbeards with Great Opens, and in the last patch, they actually now have Charge Defense against Large Foes. I'm not sure if it was a patch or a hotfix, but huge buff to the Dwarves, huge. Because no longer, uh, you know, a lot of times in dealing with Chaos and other factions like that who are very armored, you would have to bring Dwarf Warriors or, or you know, uh, other units like that, you know, Warriors of Dragonfire Pass, Longbeards with standard shields, just to get that Charge Defense on your flanks. But now, though you, it isn't ideal, these guys can at least take that beating a little bit. I don't know if that was a stat they had before and it just wasn't in the tooltip, but if, I'm pretty sure it wasn't. But still, these guys are going to be a lot more useful now. And you can see my opponent's Hell Cannon already raining down hell no pun intended uh, i brought the iron breakers nor grimlings iron breakers these guys are just so much fun i don't know if they're the most competitive in this build but still they're just great to use always a good time uh it's more long uh, the grumbling guard they have that nice vigor aura so of course they're essential in this matchup and aside from that just a bunch of long and dwarf warriors the great weapons dragon back slayers grom brindle two rune smiths uh, one which has the full suit of runes uh grom brindle also uh has a pretty nice set of abilities as well with the flash bomb and the no fear which is pretty good and those really kind of drag out you know knock down games like this one and then of course one thane I used to like to bring two Thanes, but again, since they can't carry potions, I feel like they're not quite as valuable as even a Runesmith with the Rune of Wrath and Rune only provides so much utility against the Warriors of Chaos and these harassing factions. I wouldn't call Chaos a harassing faction, but someone who's going to be cycle charging you and things like that, it's so useful to get that damage in when they charge in. So. Uh, aside from that, that's pretty much it for my army. Kind of just a very heavy infantry army. So the Iron Breakers, a bunch of long beards with great weapons, some dwarf warriors mixed in there, slayers, thunders, all kinds of fun stuff. So that's it for my army. So as far as my opponent's forces go, he actually has a pretty cool composition. He has two Chaos Knights with lances, so definitely putting a lot of marbles in this basket. These guys, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> cost around 1,500 resources a piece. So this is a lot of money right here. So if he's able to charge in, get a lot of value against my long beards, get rear charges, you know, get them when they're not braced, he could potentially, you know, run away with this game pretty easily. Also, so on top of that he does have a chaos lord and looks like he's rocking both the potions so you know a very strong contingent here the one downside of you know using your lord with your calf you know faction is that in your front line you're not going to have that same presence for example if i have grom brindle in here just you know cracking skulls and really working through his main core his line could collapse if i'm able to defend my back line so uh, and as far as the rest of his army go, I mean, this is pretty typical. Just, you know, Chaos Warriors with great opens across the board with a few Chevrons on some of them. These guys do really well against the Dwarves. Uh, right now, when buffed, they have 39 weapon strength. And when you compare that to Longbeards, uh, the 34 I have. So these guys are going to hit like trucks and are very, very good infantry for what you're paying. I actually really like Chaos Warriors. In the back, he does have Aspiring Champs. Bringing th three of these guys is a bit of a maybe. I mean, they do magic damage, which is the, issue, uh, the main issue. And if you look at, you know, Grom Brindle, for example, he himself has 25% resistance to magic damage, which is a huge mitigation. Now, when I first started playing after Aspiring Champs came out, I brought three of them a lot of the time just because I loved that encouragement in the front line. But as I played a little bit more, I decided maybe one or two might be a bit better. But again, you know, I, I still like Aspiring Champions so much. They're so durable and just bring a lot to the table. So not a terrible choice. He does have a Chaos Sorcerer with the Lore of Metal, which is interesting. Actually, I don't even know the abilities. I think he has Plague of Rust and then some sort of other armor debuff, which should be interesting. And that'll be helpful, actually, with the Chaos Knights with Lances, because these guys don't have your traditional armor piercing. So if he's able to reduce the armor and then get a huge charge, that could actually be a really nice synergy. So like, very cool to see my opponent doing that. And then, of course, a Chaos Cannon. Or a, a, it's not a Chaos Cannon, a Hell Cannon, excuse me. And uh, that's pretty much it. So right now, you can see his Hell Cannon is uh, doing some serious work against my Longbeards. And it's already racked up quite a few kills, uh, you know, bringing this group down from, I believe, what do they start at? Around 75 models. So killing five models and doing pretty substantial HP damage. So I don't really have a choice. I have to get in there ASAP before that Hell Cannon just tears me to pieces. You can see it makes a great contact with my Iron Breakers. And that's definitely really, really hurts the heart right there. <laughs> just seeing all those so expensive units just take a beating like that. Thankfully, I'm able to get my Thunderers up, and I do have my Dragonback Slayers protecting them. And honestly, the one group of Dragonback Slayers is going to be a huge issue for these Chaos Knights. I mean, these guys do have charge defense against large, if I'm not mistaken, and are very tough to kill. So you can see I form a formation here, and I'm taking some initial fire on these Chaos Warriors, though I haven't killed any models yet. They're doing pretty good damage, and over the course of a long battle, they'll wear this entire group down pretty hard. So over here, 
he is kind of getting ready to flank, but the warriors, uh, the dragback slayers are indeed ready. So in the front line, we're going to get a nice little engagement. Thankfully, this group's already taken a bit of damage, but my opponent does use transmutation of lead. So it lowers their combat stats a lot. So very well played in my opponent here. And you can see the Iron Breakers are throwing charges in there, doing pretty good, and actually disrupts the formation quite a bit and can help with the charges. Now they're engaged here. Things are getting you know, down and dirty. There's aspiring champs here, and you know the melee is essentially underway. So in the back line, we're continuing to skirmish. You can see that the Thunders are applying a lot of pressure. And what I was telling you guys, the Rune of Rathrun is so good. I mean, you know, he comes in, he gets harassed, doesn't get any value out of that. Whereas if I didn't have that Runesmith back there, he would have just rode by, you know, unimpeded and would have forced me to micro lock. But now he's taking this heavy duty fire and I'm just trying to stay in the middle between here and here, trying to decide where he was going to go. And, you know, again, it looks like he wanted to commit to these Thunders and I was totally fine with the Dragon Back Slayers taking that charge. Even though, you know, they're not going to be braced for it. If they get in there, you can see they should be able to kill a few of these Chaos Knight models here with their really high weapon damage and their anti-large bonus. You can see a Chaos Knight going down back there. And also this whole time they're taking a Thunder Fire because they're a pretty big target. So they're not going to be obstructed as much by these Dragon, uh, these dragon Back Slayers. I always like that the Iron Breakers just kind of randomly throw satchel charges throughout the battle. You can see they're throwing them at the cab here and doing a really good job. And the Thunders and the Dawi are continuing to chase them down. And look at that. As they run, they're taking charges. And it's actually doing quite a bit of damage. So I was very happy with that result. But unfortunately, it looks like he's going to be able to put a little bit of a move on you here. So on the front line, you can see Big Papa Grumbrindle. He's getting ready, or Uncle Grumbrindle, as he should be called. And he hits this guy like a truck. That's one hit, and that wasn't even the best contact. You just wait. There's another one. That's another 20% HP. So if Grom's able to get rid of this guy, it's going to be a really good situation for me in the melee core. You can see the Longbeards are holding up pretty well. Uh, you know, again, the Chaos Warriors are, you know, a pretty darn good infantry unit against armor. But the Dwarves are, you know, standing toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and they have the support of the Runesmith. As I mentioned, I do have two of them. So you can see that uh, one runesmith is here, so they're getting all those auras, those really nice auras, and of course I'm cycling those every chance I get. In the back line, unfortunately, my opponent was able to get a really nice charge of my thunders, and more importantly, that hell cannon is targeting them, and it's just dumpstering them, and at this point, they are broken. So very well played on my opponent with his calf, but really in the front line, he's suffering a lot because I had a lot more invested into my main infantry core, whereas he, you know, he put so many marbles into these guys. And you can see my slayers are just jumping and karate kicking them, and though some of them are getting trampled. They're still taking these guys out slowly and you know wearing them down and then of course the double rune of wrath and rune every chance they came close i would just spam it on them you can see their leadership is steady right now and they're not happy about the situation fortunately that darn hell cannon is just really being a terror right now but let's go ahead and take a look at the front line so grombrindle was able to chase off that lore of a metal wizard here right now he's kind of wading through the battle lines trying to kind of get back here to protect some of his troops he's definitely having a good time but these uh these have finally charge in here they commit i'm able to get a rune of wrath and rune and uh, he does use the standard eye as well. So his guys, though they were steady and pretty you know, close to routing, right now, if you take a look, they're at 31 leadership right here. So without that standard eye, they might route pretty quickly. So pretty well played on the time uh, as far as my opponent goes. The Thunders were able to come back in the fourth quarter, and they're continuing to just apply pressure. And they do really well against these Chaos Knights, even though they are shielded. And I believe they have, they actually have bronze shields. So you'd think a really expensive unit like Chaos Knights could at least afford some good shields, but I guess not. See that freaking Hell Cannon decapitated like, like six layers right there funny how like that animation just kind of is the same across the board you know but a lot of these chaos knights are indeed routing the dawi are just standing crowd they're doing their thing that runesmith in here you know they're getting the transmutation of lead which is a pretty big debuff i mean 22 percent weapon damage and 34 melee attack that's a big debuff but the issue is it's so expensive the transmutation of lead if i'm not mistaken we'll go ahead and take maybe take a look at that afterwards or in another game but i remember it being so pricey but i was able to win pretty convincingly over here the grumbling guard are great you can see they're fresh I mean, how good is that? They're fresh. After this entire battle, I have an entire group of really elite armor-piercing infantry who are in great shape. If you look at the Chaos Warriors, they're very tired, very tired. Let's see, I don't think these guys were getting the aura, but they're still only winded, actually, which is great. And the Iron Breakers are active. I mean, the, that's a big factor because, you know, that kind of uh, exhaustion penalty in the late game is a pretty big deal. So definitely something a lot of people underestimate the doors for. So I use the Grumbling Guard to try and go shut down this Hell Cannon, but my opponent very wisely intercepts with his Chaos Sword. He does have some units coming back from route as well, but, you know, these Iron Breakers, not Iron Breakers, this Thane, as well as these uh, Grumbling Guard here are confident, and they are, you know, going to be able to pierce his armor pretty well, and I'm not sure if he's used his potion. It looks like he does now pop his potion of toughness. It's pretty well played on my opponent's part here, but a lot of his forces are retreating. He has a few Aspiring Champs kind of in the mix, but Aspiring Champions are more of kind of a, you know, a, not, I wouldn't call a filler unit, but a, a supplemental unit. They're not going to be able to, like, especially against the Dwarves. Like, if they were fighting low-tier Empire Infantry with their stats, they would be able to dumpster them and maybe chase them off. But against these Dwarves who are just, you know, line, you know heavily armored and you have magic resistance, they're not going to be able to do much. But this Chaos Sword is still trying to defend. You can see he's running down a Slayer here and there. It looks like he tramples that guy pretty good, which is definitely a shame for him. But 
freaking Hell Cannon, I swear, is his MVP this game. That thing has just been going insane. So at the end of the game here, just to kind of save me and make sure I don't lose anything, I use Grom Brindle Has No Fear. This was the time because I didn't want that Hell Cannon, you know, routing off units and then his Chaos Sword picking off units. I wanted everything to just fight to the bitter end. So you can see Grom Brindle gets a nice pimp slapping in here on the Chaos Sword. He uses the standard die to, you know, try and keep him in the battlefield. He keeps his leadership steady, but if Big Papa Grom gets in there, he's going to just womp on him. So, I mean, we'll see how it goes for him. But I am able to get back this Hell Cannon, which actually, uh, when I looked at the start of the battle, I think I had one Chevron, and now it's up to Silver Chevron. So you can see these dwarves slaying their Betrayer cousins here and should do a pretty good job, considering they're much more heavily armored and these Chaos Swords are not ready to, for this party at all. So that's pretty much it. That's all she wrote. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed that Dawi battle. I really, I really like the Dwarf vs. Chaos matchup. It's fun. It's just kind of like a heavyweight match, you know? You get all these guys with just heavy armor and freaking big axes and, and you know, pole arms just laying the smack down. But um, Grombridle did great. I mean, you guys saw the Longbeards and did, they held their own against the Warriors of Chaos. But you can see, look at the kills on these guys. 54. None of my Longbeards racked up that many kills. The one thing that probably I could have substituted out that would have been a lot better was getting rid of the Ironbreakers. But actually, you guys saw their Satchel Charges when I was able to target their Chaos Knights. was doing really well. So, uh, you know, again, I had a lot of fun with them. The Thunders did their thing as well as you guys saw. So, pretty pleased with that composition there. My opponent's Hell Cannon was the MVP. Look at that, 131 kills. So that thing probably definitely paid for itself, or at least came close, and uh, was able to do some serious damage. You know, it shut down my Thunders, it wore, wore down my Iron Breakers quite a bit, so very cool stuff. Um, it was pretty cool seeing the Chaos Sorcerer with the Lore of Metal in play. Um, I'd be interested to try it out myself, but I still feel like it's a very underwhelming Lore of Magic. But I wonder what would be the best against the Dwarves. I mean, none of them are great options. Even Lore of Fire, the Cascading Fire Cloak, got nerfed. And it is not nearly that, you know, the, it used to be so good against the Dwarves. Armor-piercing damage, but now, like, it's hard. Um, so maybe that's why people are experimenting and trying out new things. But uh, time will tell. And I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, Dwarf cast and more content coming soon. Stay tuned, guys, and have an excellent night.